Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. Most people have heard about statistics or polls that report on the state of the American consumer and something called consumer confidence, but few know what it is or what it means or even what the latest report reveals. You might have heard of Keynesian economist Paul Krugman, who claimed that such statistics were biased against Democrats and President Biden. But my colleague at the Mises Institute, Jonathan Newman, showed properly understood those statistics from late last year were reasonable and straightforward. You should be following Dr. Newman's writings on Mises.org as he does regular analysis of Paul Krugman and economic statistics. As the American and world economy begin to emerge from the economic chaos induced by COVID and the governments and the Federal Reserve's war of all against all, we are beginning to see more synchronicity in economic reports and statistics, and therefore more clarity about the state and direction of the economy. The Consumer Confidence Index seems to be reemerging as a reliable number after a period of chaos, free money, and unlimited job opportunities. One tangible example of this asynchronicity in markets or dysfunctionality in markets is housing, where the Fed policy is keeping people from selling their homes in order to move, resulting in tight supplies and much higher prices, which is preventing people from buying. That's what you get when you put the Federal Reserve in charge of the mortgage market. In that light, I would like to discuss the state of consumer confidence today. The Consumer Confidence Survey and Index is data from thousands of individual Americans collected by the Conference Board, a private institution. They survey American consumers on their current and prospective views of the economy regarding such things as their income, price inflation, buying plans, and even vacations, but also their expectations for business, stock prices, and interest rates. They also collect information about people's age, income, and region so that the responses can be weighed and sorted. While the recent report for April had mixed results for the economy, I believe that given the recent drop in job openings and the numbers of people quitting their jobs, that this is painting an increasingly clear picture of a worsening economy that we identified last year, and therefore economic conditions could be expected to worsen. The overall Consumer Confidence Index now has three months of decline, but remains out of completely negative territory. In most areas, confidence has declined only marginally in the recent report with respect to job prospects, family financial conditions, inflation, etc. And expectations of a recession have actually decreased to a relatively low level. However, Confidence is fickle and often changes dramatically right before and during an economic recession or crisis. Confidence has already dipped as low as it was during the COVID chaos and seems to have resumed its downward trajectory that began in 2018, which was, of course, interrupted by COVID, so that my expectations for the economy in 2018 were that we were going to reach an all-time low in consumer confidence. And this may yet be realized and even realized much quicker than anybody can imagine. With labor markets tightening, interest rates edging higher, and planned purchases of big ticket items like homes, vehicles, appliances, vacations, and all sorts of discretionary items on the decline, We will continue to monitor these numbers closely in the coming months and quarters. Of course, we will also see, as we've talked about, higher probabilities of outright shocks in financial markets, foreign affairs, and commodity markets in the coming months and view that as a potential catalyst for discrete drops in consumer confidence. 